So if you're trying to catch yourself a wolf, you know what I'm saying? You put it along their path, set those snares, the little wires, okay? So that as they're running through the path, and as they put their foot oh, so delicately into that placement, and as they go to step up, that wire swoops over their foot, right? And as they step away, it cinches down. And as it cinches, it tightens so that it cannot be released. The more they struggle, the tighter it gets. Very, very miserable, okay? That concept, until they're trapped, okay? And so that wire, the other end of it, is driven into a peg, a post, that it goes down, down, down into the ground, right? Or it's anchored to something that is not gonna get away, like a tree. Then they cannot get away. No matter how much they fight, there's no way to get out of it. There's literally nothing they can do. They're trapped. That is the way that our adversary, the devil, the dragon, the great red dragon, stalks his prey. That's how he's stalking you since the day you were conceived. Like your entire life, he has been setting up snares in society predominantly because he's like the god of this age, of this eon, of this time frame, of this earth. He is the one who is pulling the mechanisms and the levers that govern the society. If, like you've never studied the word government, just that word alone, govern, okay? It's literally like to steer and to control. Meant literally is like the word for mind. Government is like mind control, straight up. Steering and controlling the minds of men. That's literally what government is here for. Okay, and at the seat of power, residing over the agents of evil, the individual human characters that you guys see on the TV and the news that you shake your fist at and you're like, if only we could get rid of this guy. Those characters, behind them is a cadre of a priest class. Right? Behind them is a cadre of spiritual fallen ones. Okay? Principalities, powers, rulers, dominions, thrones. Paranumenikai. Right. Dr. Michael Lake has a great little exposition of them right in here. It's going to be fun, you guys. We're going to dive all over the place here. Come on. Take a walk with me for a second. Because those that are caught up in the snares of the devil, y'all, they need deliverance. They need salvation. You know what I'm saying? They need some outside agent to come in, step in, and cut them free and release them from that snare. Because if that snare gets around your neck, son, you're going to die. For real. It's bad news. You know what I mean? Let's check this out. He's got a whole section going through the various different archons, like the rulers of evil. But then he's got the other side. You know what I'm saying? Like... How do we contend with it? The better word for it is like, there's also these immortals, okay? Immortals. Angels is a very like, for, unfortunately, most of us have this pagan ideology that came from the Catholic Church, like the great oh, daughter of the whore, you know what I'm saying? That's like these fluffy, baby, naked, angel-looking, winged creature things. Not what we're talking about here. Immortals. Better word for it. Every time you read the word angels, you should think of immortals. There's classes, like species within that. Okay, there's messengers, those are the ones that like deliver messages, like ambassadors, carriers, think of your like postal agents, know what I'm saying? And then there's these other powers, seraphim, these flying winged ones, okay? Then there's these cherubim, which have these multiple faces and this incredible ability to travel around. Guardians, sword bearers, fierce fighters, okay? Then there's these ofana, which are like these orbs, these people would call them like UFOs, a lot of them. Just gonna say it! That's where it comes from, y'all. Lots of those kinds of things. These chariots, Ezekiel 1 and 2. If you haven't read that, man, read Ezekiel 1 and 2. It's a bizarro world, I'm telling you. Anyways, he's describing a in there. And these are like the, the literal vessels with which other beings can travel around it. Those are called a phonom in the scriptures. There's watchers as well, like we read about in the book of Daniel. They have this ability to transform men. Okay, They're the transformers. Those of you guys are thinking of all the movies, the Decepticons and the Autobots. They're real, they're biblical, they're, they're like realities. These are like things, entities, immortals, okay? These watcher beings, those that like descended of Mount Hermon, 200 of them led this rebellion led by Gadriel and Azazel and these other ones. Anyways, they shapeshifted themselves to take on the form of man to be able to mingle with women and abominate, do a genetic experimentation and hybridize the entire earth, abominate, pervert the world into a different image. That's where like radical evil came from. The serpent in Genesis 3 and then Genesis 6 at the Watchers coming down and another reincursion of, of massive like occult working, like the, the Masonic rising of this Luciferianism got rebirthed through Nimrod and through the, what you would call the mystery religions there in Genesis 10 when you start to read about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, lots of stuff going on in the scriptures. Well, then there's this continuity of a falling away of these immortals over time that they begin to also further rebel. And at the end of the age, there is this great one where the dragon sweeps away a third of them, okay, of these immortals, different, all those classes of beings we were talking about, sweeps them away and draws them down, brings them down to the earth to wage this ultimate showdown, this great battle of the ages, the war of the ages. 
that showdown time frame that's like literally what we're like ripening into you know what i'm saying we are beginning to experience that and much of that came from the revealing of these deity schemes to man to those agents of evil especially in particularity in the 1800s there was this unleashing of a lot of that occult ideology those immortals whispering to the priest class how to engage in dialing the phone book to these other entities well at the same time what you see is anytime the enemy raises up comes in like a flood Yahuwah, it says, raises up a standard, like a fortified defense against it, okay? He builds men and women of righteousness to stand and resist it. Textbook example of this is the book of Esther. Fantastic book. If you've not read the book of Esther, man, it's so good. Maybe we should just read a little bit of the book of Esther, you know what I'm saying? Because, here, let me give you a moderate synopsis of the book of Esther. One of my favorite books, because this is why I'm always telling you guys, the days may be evil, but you were born for such a time as this. That comes from the book of Esther, okay? Here's the deal. Book of Esther time frame, okay? First of all, this is important because lots going on in the history of the Bible, okay? History of the world, let's put it plainly, okay? There's people, okay, conspiring towards the death of righteous forever. They've been around forever. They got these like seed of the serpent people, okay? People are like, they're the reptilians. Literally, they're the children of the dragon. It's not a joke. It's a serious thing, y'all. Anyways, these hybridized creature, horrible serpent eater people, they have this like idea all the time to destroy the righteous. They, they are like possessed, okay? That's the best way to put it. Because their father is the devil. If you don't know about their father being the devil, check this out. What happened is these rebels have this ideology that gets poisoned in their brain because they're tapping into a different force, okay? Anytime you guys are watching the Star Wars movies and all this other stuff, that's Luciferianism being just blasted down into your brains in beautiful theatrical like mind control here, these are so cute. Embrace the force. The force they're talking about there is called iniquity, all right? Iniquity is the power bank for the kingdom of darkness, okay? Righteousness, set-apartness, holiness, the distinct set-apart nature of Yahuwah is the power source of purity, okay? It's everything other than that stuff. That's holiness, all right? That is the true power source that all those immortals, before they rebel, they're tapped into that. They're continually fueled by it. They don't need anything. They never need anything because Yahuwah's power, his kadoshness, his set-apartness, literally is a limitless power bank. It never needs to be recharged. It never needs to be refilled. It is forever filled, okay? The kingdom of darkness during their times of rebellion, like in Ezekiel 28, let's go there. He's got a chapter in here. I'm gonna read it in here. This is helpful information, okay? Because his name is not Lucifer. I know there's like, there's a, that thing. People are like, yeah, the Lucifer. His name is Halal ben Shahar. It's like the shrieking, howling one. That's like literally like screech owl, like a screaming, howling one. That's literally what his name is. It's Halal ben Shahar. That's like what he's actually called. So check this out. In Isaiah 14, he makes these declarations, these proclamations, this like this possession of his mind. He was this anointed cherub that guarded over the throne of Yahuwah. Like he was literally one of the most important immortals ever created because he was able to be in the place oh, like shielding around the glory of Yahuwah, all-consuming fire. Super special place, okay? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of your vials. The worm is spread under you and the worms cover thee. How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, Halal ben Shahar, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of Elohim. I will sit upon the mountain of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. This was like his declarations, okay? He then got possessed with this ideology and it literally says iniquity was found in him. Once that happened, okay? That's the origin story for where iniquity is. There's three main components to like failures to follow the ways of Yahuwah, to break in the commandments, the instructions, to sin. You have sin, which is transgression of the Torah. First John, the only place in the scriptures where it's defined. Just something to consider, y'all. First John tells you what sin is. It's not missing the mark. It's not found in the Bible. It's breaking the commandments of Yah. Something to consider. Anyways, transgression, right, is like the continuity of doing that. It's being like, I'm gonna continue to sin. Iniquity is like wholly giving yourself over to that, like absolutely committing yourself to it. During iniquity, there's literally like a changing of yourself, like your nature begins to get changed because you come under the influence of these other immortals because